when I was 24, I stumbled upon an idea and decided to turn it into a startup along with my co-founder. There aren't many biotech founders that are 24, 25. So when I talk to like my friends and family about this, a lot of the times they assume that people are treating me completely differently or that maybe I find it hard for people to take me seriously. So I wanted to share my experience with you today and tell you how I feel about that. If I feel like I'm being treated differently or if I feel like I have to work harder to prove myself in a way. So before I do that, I obviously have to give you some context, right? like why am I doing this and how did, it, did this even happen? First of all, I already knew that I wanted to be a founder. I have a background in biochemistry. I'm obsessed, fascinated, completely passionate about biotechnology and what science can do to humanity and medicine. So that is my absolute passion and I have no doubt about it. And I've tried working in academia, I tried working in the biotech industry and just none of these jobs made me feel like I was actually creating a tangible impact um, in patients' lives. I knew that if I created something from scratch, combining that, you know, passion and, and motivation that I have with wanting to, to really change lives in a way, then I knew that the startup route is something that I would like to pursue. And also, I love the thought of creating something from scratch, something that's yours. I had already experienced that in the past. I had a, created a couple of small companies as a solopreneur, if you will. I just knew. I just knew that this was a, the right path for me. So, September 2022, I got selected to participate in a program called EU Talenton. This was a program for 100 young scientists all across the continent that wanted to create something big that, I don't know, were ambitious, I guess. So everybody had like a different mission and our mission was cancer. And there, my team, we decided to focus on the problem that late cancer detection supposes. We, or me, really as a person, I really connected with the fact that, you know, cancer is deadly, but not necessarily because it's super deadly, but because it's typically detected too late. So what are we doing wrong as a society or what are we failing to achieve for people to get detected or diagnosed earlier? A lot of that relies on lack of adherence, like lack of patients that are routinely getting screened for cancer, especially in lung cancer. So we came up with an initiative to bring the screenings closer to the people, make it more accessible instead of expecting the opposite to happen. So without getting into much detail, we essentially identified a problem. We came up with an idea. And not only that, but I also met my co-founder. My co-founder was part of uh, the team. And it was a perfect match because he came in with the expertise. He had been investigating cancer for over a decade. So not only did he have the theoretical expertise, but also also the contacts, the connections. So we decided to give it a shot. So that's how I ended up here. But of course, I am uh, 24 at this point. I have never done anything remotely similar. So I was incredibly lost. And I think honestly, that's one of the good things about being young. You know that you don't know. Maybe this is very personal, but on our end, there was really no ego. There was no, oh, I've been doing this for years. I know exactly what to do. I know the field very well. We were extremely coachable. So we were both extremely, still are, extremely aware of the fact that it was going to be a very, very hard journey if we decided to go for it. So what we decided to do is ask around. I was in, in Germany at the time, so I just started asking people around me, people that in Germany that knew about about this, I guess. And very disappointingly, um, I found people just calling me crazy right off the bat. And everybody discouraged me very quickly and said, well, if this is a scientific hypothesis, why don't you do a PhD? And after doing the PhD, you can start your company once you validate the hypothesis. And I was like, wait, no, like this is a business idea. Like it shouldn't take too long to validate the hypothesis. It could be a profitable business if it works. And if I don't, I don't think I'm the only person that's had this idea. I mean, if I take four years to do a thesis, then I'm pretty much out. So I decided to go to the US. I was very well aware of the fact that I had zero clue about how to run a biotech startup. So I went to the US and I went to every meetup, conference, congress, anything humanly possible. And this was the best thing that I could have done. I met so many incredible founders, people that have done it before. I met a lot of investors, even though we were obviously not looking for money at the point, it was really good to know what we needed. Just people that could guide us. And then in February, we decided to incorporate the company. And now it's July 25th as I'm filming this. And I, there's a lot of things I can't unfortunately 
share yet, but I think we've made great progress. We're now about to start a trial with lung cancer patients to validate this hypothesis. And then on the business side of things, we've gotten accepted into a couple of accelerators that hopefully we'll be able to announce soon. And we've also even got some funding from angel investors. So things are going incredibly well, in my humble opinion, considering we had the idea in September. Now, I think it's been a while. It's been around yeah, 10 months of going to congresses, of putting myself out there as the CEO of this startup, which really means nothing, like titles really mean nothing at this point. But still, I think I've learned a lot, a lot. I've learned a lot for sure about the process. But as I said, I want to talk about, you know, the whole age thing. So there are definitely advantages and disadvantages of being this age. And whatever I share is literally my opinion. It doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. It's just my opinion and what I've experienced. Let's start with the disadvantages. People, there's a lot of people that won't take you seriously. So this happens specifically at congresses because congresses are a funny place, you know, like especially the big ones, um, people are there to do business. They're there to do business. They have this sharp mentality on and I don't look like the person that this other person is used to doing business with. That's a reality. So when I turn to Oh my god, I have so many experiences. Um, oh, fortunately, this is the minority of encounters I've had, but honestly, I've had a lot of these um, sort of interactions where I'm trying to engage in a conversation with somebody that I find might be interesting, maybe a potential partner in the future, maybe a provider, a, I don't know. There's a billion things that a startup needs, right? So, and I'm, I'm trying to engage in the conversation and I see an immediate rejection in the person's face. Mind you, like these are typically white, older men. I feel like 80% of them look exactly the same. So when I come in, I'm like, hi, nice to meet you, blah, blah. A lot of them are like, now that's a reality, but I do want to point out that it's the minority of the times. This does not happen all the time. And sort of a counterpoint to that would be that this happens mostly at very business oriented events like congresses, but congresses also have receptions and the receptions are my playground. That's where I normally make the most meaningful connections. So all of a sudden they don't care about the fact that maybe I'm not your typical 50 year old men but we're still doing business right and the whole people not taking you seriously um another sort of counterpoint to that would be that it doesn't last very long i feel like people quickly realize that you know i'm not just a silly girl with an idea so yeah even though it happens that people don't take me seriously a it's a minority of the times and b it lasts seconds typically another thing is that people um <laughs> <laughs> when I'm in congresses and stuff, people think I'm a hostess. People will often think that I work there and that I'm part of the staff. To be honest, I don't take much offense because realistically, it wasn't that long ago where I was at the same exact conferences working as a hostess. <laughs> so, And sometimes people will be like, hey, sorry, where's the bathroom? And I'm like, I show them the badge. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm an attendee as well. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. So I think Again, that's also why I don't take offense because people quickly say, you know, oh, sorry about that. Like people often feel embarrassed <laughs> when that happens. If, if the response was like, really? Oh, then maybe I would take some offense. Not gonna lie. A very, 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 very clear disadvantage and possibly the biggest disadvantage is that if you're young, that typically means that you don't have the same trajectory, the same professional career that an older person has. And that means you lack the experience. You lack the experience and you lack the connections. And that's a reality. And even though we've made great progress um, during this past months, I do think that it has taken us longer to get to where we're at that it possibly would have taken a person with more experience just because the first months, if not the first half year, was figuring out stuff. Like we, we devoted that time to figure things out. When I started this, it's hard to say like how many people I've met and how many connections I've made, but a good way to measure it would be LinkedIn connections, right? And when I started, I think it was around 500, 600 um, connections. And I'm now at, I think 1200 or 1300 and I've, focus heavily on growing my connection and people that are in the field somehow. It's not just random people that I've been adding. So it would be fair to say that most of these 600 uh, contacts that I now have on my LinkedIn network are mostly people that I've met th since starting the startup. So it's great. And I feel like I have now made amazing connections that regardless of the outcome of the startup, I'll have with me for life, but it has taken it has taken me months and, and possibly will continue to take a long time to build 
insulted because I was starting from scratch, from scratch, not knowing literally anybody. So that is a disadvantage, obviously. But I will turn that into an advantage. Lacking the experience can be a blessing or a curse. Like this whole age thing can be a blessing or a curse. And the way lacking experience can be a blessing is that as biotech founders, we're taking our innocence and we are allowing it to serve as an inspiration to build the product. That I think that was terrible wording. What I'm trying to say is that the more experience and more in-depth you are in this complicated field that biotech is, the more narrow-minded, and again, this is just my opinion, the more narrow-minded you will be in building your product and what your solution is. I think that the approach we're taking to enabling access to lung cancer screening is incredibly simple. And it would never have been this simple if we were 20, 30 years in, um, in the process of developing a technology. And I think the simplicity of the product we're building is precisely the biggest unique selling point because that involves a lower uh, price point, that involves more accessibility to patients, that involves less time for data processing. And I know this might be hard to understand without really knowing what the technology is, and sorry about that. Um, I unfortunately can't disclose that at the moment. But my point is that I think we're leveraging our naive mindset into building something as simple as possible. And it's not that like we're building a product out of thin air. It's not that there isn't science backing the idea. There is ton of science, there is ton of literature that's backing the, the research idea that we have. It's just that we've realized that even talking with, you know, key opinion leaders in the space, when we tell them the idea, they're like, you know, I, this is a great idea and I never thought about it. To me, that's a blessing. Another advantage, possibly the biggest advantage, is obviously risk taking. When you're 24 and you start a project like this, there is like literally by definition nothing to lose, like nothing. Time, you're 24. Money, you don't have much to begin with and you don't need much. That's another blessing. Like I have been working full time on the startup for like the past 10 months without a salary. This is the first month where I'm able to pay myself a little, for, a little from the company. And I'm able to do some side hustles, like some science communication side hustles that I already had ongoing because even if I put a very little amount of work into those side hustles, that'll give me in, enough money to get by because that's all I need, a bit of money. Cause I'm 24, 25 now. And what you can gain is so much more than the potential risks. Even if this all fails, I am learning by the day like the amount of things i've learned in the past 10 months if you told me the past 10 months was actually three years i'll be like that makes total sense yeah this has been three years but no it's been not even a year so the amount of things i'm learning the amount of connections i am making hello all of this is just so worth it and i understand that for a person that's 45 50 55 putting themselves in such a risky place might take a lot of more thought and consideration because you know the chances of this going south are extremely high and maybe the risk does not balance out the rewards and lastly what i want to talk about is i think there is a factor about being young that is constantly overlooked and that is empathy so if you're in this space you know that the startup ecosystem is beautiful in the way that people really want to help each other out and that's when that's how you get started and there's something about being this age that you connect i at least i want to feel that you connect with people to a different extent i don't know because i haven't been 45 and started a company but i at least i'm under the impression that there are certain certain groups of people that are like i really want to help you there are people that even openly say it, like the fact that you're doing it at this age i want to support you what can i do so i think that's something that i am heavily capitalizing on and i am exploiting to the maximum potential is this all because of the age of course not there also has to be a sound idea behind a, a good team behind it there's a billion factors but i want to think that there's something beautiful about you know, having a team of young scientists wanting to do that. I experience it as the CEO that's more sort of the face of the company that's out there making the connections. But my co-founder, who is in his early 30s, also experienced it in the research world because a lot of the research, like the tenure professors, are again, you know, a lot older. And 
one of the reasons why they're eager to collaborate with him or collaborate with us, um, I am saying one of the reasons, not the, the, the main reason, but one of the reasons is because they say, I love the fact that there is a young scientist going out of his way to make this happen, to, to make a project like this come to life. So all in all, the conclusion, do I feel like I'm being treated differently? I feel like it's an elephant in the room. I feel like people don't necessarily directly say it, <laughs> but I guess the answer would be yes. At least in my personal opinion, I am trying to capitalize as much as I can on being a young founder. I'm learning about what the benefits of being a young founder means and also trying to be very aware of what the disadvantages are so I can surround myself with people, build a team of people that will help me prevent certain mistakes. And now there's another elephant in the room, which is uh, being a female biotech founder. And I think that's a topic for another video because I obviously do have an opinion about it and it's a fairly controversial one actually. So I sort of have to gather my thoughts and think through it well first, but yeah, expect a video of me talking about that too. So I would like to know you viewer watching this video, what was your first impression when you clicked on this video? I'd love to know if the stigma you had in your head was that I would probably have a much harder time as a young founder in getting this started or did you naturally gravitate towards I'm sure she's getting attention just because she's young. I, I don't know, would love to hear your thoughts in general. And in regards to where the company is going and what things are happening in the startup, I will share some exciting news soon, so make sure to stay tuned for more. So see you in the next video. Bye!